So hi, welcome. Uh, thanks for coming. My name is uh, Dennis de Bel. Uh, I'm from Rotterdam, the Netherlands, and I'm here to talk about 3D steganography. Um, I'm sure you all know what it is. <laughs> so, steganography is uh, is a practice of of hiding uh, or concealing a, a file or a video or an image inside of another file or image or video. Um, so you could say it's like, oh, my hair is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Ponytail. Wait a second. Oh man. I need my I need my hands though, for the live demo. <laughs> so, is it okay now? Um, so you could say it's like hiding um, um, uh, files in in like plain sight. Um, and what is 3D? Well, it's it's bigger than 2D. Can you increase the font size? Yeah. Something like this. Okay, so what is 3D? It's it's bigger than 2D, so it's better. And um, I will mainly focus on like 3D printing uh, right now. Um, so yeah, 3D um, in respect to 3D printing is of course um, yeah making everything at home just at the push of a button or just from 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 your working workplace, so you never have to leave your workplace and keep on working and all the stuff will magically appear somewhere in a corner. Um, so what happened after the promise of like self-replicating machines and endless endless um, resources, um, people started to print like jewelry and little fiddly things, pretty much trash. Or yeah, people scan their own shit and print it. And of course, people started printing guns. Does anyone, everyone know this, this one? Sorry? Liberator. Yes. It's called the Liberator. Lib liber liberty as in Libre, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a project by um, Defense Distributed, and um, I think it was done like early 2013. Um, it caused quite a, a, like a media hype. Like people started printing this and testing it out, and actually, um, yeah, caused it a, a change in, in legislation in, in the UK. Um, they actually sort of revived an, an, an old um, law about concealed weapons, or undetectable and untraceable weapons, so weapons without serial numbers, uh, weapons that cannot be detected in metal detectors. Um, so, and. What this means is that if you like carry this thing around, uh, you might up end up in jail for 10 years in the UK. Um, what it actually didn't do was liberate anyone, of course. Um, maybe the opposite was true, because um, I'm I'm working at the, the art school in Rotterdam, and I teach um, yeah um, like uh, rapid prototyping and 3D printing. And all of a sudden, I, I saw these signs uh, appearing um, about yeah that you're not allowed to print a gun. So I was like, yeah, okay. Um, so what what are we gonna do now? Maybe you can guess. <laughs> print a gun, of course. <laughs> so first, let's invent a problem. So how to print a gun and get away with it. Um, come up with a solution. So um, I took the approach of uh, steganography because it's really nice to fool uh, humans and machines. Um, and I'll show you some classic examples of, of steganography. Um, so the basic idea is you have like, uh, for example, an image like Lena, um, and I have a 3D model, I can, I can also show you, it's a teapot, actually let me, let me show it for real, okay, 
So this is the 3D model. Um, now if you just um, cut the, the teapot after um, the, the, the host, like the Lena image, it becomes sort of a, a, a polymorph, polymorphic file. Uh, yes, teapot. Mm, it doesn't really matter what kind of phone I'm on. Oh, shit. Huh? Uh, sorry. So, ah. Uh, uh, so you can just yeah put the two files together using cut, and you have a new file. I call it BMP now, and you can see it's an image. But if you now rename it to STL, that's the the stereo lithography um, 3D uh, um, 3D model file, and you load it up in MeshLab. It's also a teapot. <laughs> um, but of course, um, if this teapot was, was like uh, this gun, um, you would see maybe an image. But if you would print it, you would still yeah, print a gun. So yeah, it's like classic steganography is, is based on data. And, and humans are not based on data. Uh, they're based on carbohydrates. So if you print this uh, BMP, you can, you can see um, uh, the gun. So we need some way of concealing this gun. We need like a file in a cake. Mm. So first I, I tried it manually um, using MeshLab. It's a really nice uh, open source 3D editing toolkit using for using point clouds, for example, to reconstruct 3D models. Um, so the payload is the, the liberator, and the host is, of course, the teapot model I just showed. Um, if you combine them in, uh, in, in MeshLab, it's called uh, just almost like cutting, just flattening, flattening the two files, like you would do in a <coughs> Photoshop layer. And then you can create like a teapot with <laughs> a little gun inside. So this is uh, Cura. Uh, it's used to slice the model up for 3D printing and also controlling the printer. And it's also open source. Um, so I, I wanted to print it with like at like Shapeways or this iMaterialize uh, online 3D printing uh, service, but it's it's so expensive. It's like 300 euros for this small teapot. So I um, I looked up on 3dhubs.com um, where you can find like local printers. And yeah, two people just happily <laughs> printed this with, with no questions asked actually. Um, so I ended up with this teapot with this yeah. Liberator inside, um, but of course there's all so much, so much work to do it manually. You have to uh, align it and stuff. So there's another trick, which I call the gri the gift wrap algorithm, and it's um, using uh, the quick hole algorithm to create sort of a gift wrap around a 3D model, uh, a convex hole. It's called. Um, and this is the command. You can also use a, a mesh lab uh, on the command line, but I mean, you first have to make a script in the GUI, which sort of makes sense. And so, you, yeah, this, these are like the, the other parts, except for the low receiver of the liberator gun. And I put them in this hull. Um, yeah, if you remove the hull, you, you end up with the parts. Mm. And you can also fool machines, of course. Um, I showed the, the, the Cura software before. And uh, I made a special version for it. It's on, the, on GitHub, if you want to look it up. And this is a special version that will only print guns. No matter what <laughs> file you put in, and a gun will come out. 
Uh, I cannot really demonstrate it because I don't have a 3D printer with me, but you can download it for you and try it for yourself. Uh, it's really nice. It's based on, on Python, and you can just, yeah, really easily hack into the code. So how to prevent people from printing guns? Um, well, in 2D printing, you have uh, something called steganography, um, also known as the yellow dots, um, which put like a little minuscule yellow dots on a p on on a print when you print something that can trace and uh, that can contains like a, a timestamp and the, the brand of the printer. So you can be uh, the printer can be tracked uh, by the authorities. Um, so another uh, one solution could be to put like little micro dots inside of the 3D print filament to trace the prints you make. Uh, all right, these are all like ridiculous recommendations, by the way. Um, or you can make like sort of prevent people printing for print from printing at all by um, like making some sort of virus that will go all over the world, a sort of Stuxnet for printers. Um, that causes it to heat up extremely high and yeah, burn it down like this one. This will be my next project, I guess. <laughs> or of course, you can um, start putting up notes. <laughs> I guess that will help. So in the end, who did I fool? Um, yeah, actually no one. Everyone wanted to was happily to take my money and print my models. And um, yeah, Kyle McDonald also did a project with a liberator uh, called um, I forgot the name actually. Um, liberator variations. I think you can look it up on Thingiverse. We combined also different models. Um, he said like yeah. Uh, after I did my um, my project, a week later, Prism was leaked, and everyone forgot about Defense Distributed. Um, so, yeah, actually, I'm not really sure I fooled no one, because I brought it with me <laughs> in my hand luggage. Yay! <laughs> no. so, you can you feel free to to touch it or look at it. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it up for auction, who knows. I'm not, I'm not going to take it with me anymore. Okay, that was my talk. Thank you.